a lion cub's rise to power falls into chapters like a book. A page turner packed with danger. Two brothers face a deadly rite of passage. These are the trials and tribulations of their first five years. From birth, Leo has ambitions of greatness. He wants to hunt these massive food beasts one day and dominate a pride, just like his father. Bursting with confidence, he has no idea that 80% of cubs don't survive. His sights are firmly fixed on the end goal. He wants to be Alpha. His brother Max is less ambitious. Not quite ready to claim his place at the table. It's a large family. There's mum and her four sisters, three sub-adults and five older cub cousins. Despite Leo's tenacity, the cubs come last in the feeding hierarchy. The two pride males officially get the best place at every carcass. But it doesn't stop Leo pushing his luck. Belly full, it's time for a game of tag. Timid Max plays the role of the buffalo, as usual. So Leo can practice his chokehold. But it's gonna take a lot more than confidence to become lion kings, like their father. A king is only as strong as his pride, made up of three key pillars. Number one, a strong coalition. Leo's dad and uncle, the pride males, are partners who defend the family against enemy lion attacks. Without this protection, Leo and Max would be the first killed by invading males. Pillar number two, territory. Leo and his pride live in the northwestern region of Botswana's Okavango Delta. Here, the pride males control prime hunting territory, filled with plentiful buffalo herds. It's dangerous prey, but each buffalo can feed the large lion family. And finally, number three, a pride needs loyal lionesses. The warrior queens who risk their lives to hunt for the pride. A buffalo is six times bigger than a lioness and can easily kill one. But to feed the family, these females face death every three days. When the pride cooperates, their combined weight makes it easier to topple a giant. Usually the time the cubs are called in. But not today. Buffaloes are also team players. Herd members rally to their comrades' alarm calls. Mm. 
This hunt is not over. Away from the ongoing battle, Leo, Max and the other cubs wait patiently for dinner. Minded by a vigilant babysitter. Leo submits to a wrestling lesson from his older cousin. Until they spot a returning huntress. Leo's aunt, a consequence of hunting buffalo. The cubs can't heal the wound or stop infection. The camaraderie and support of the pride can mean the difference between life and death for her. This team effort is a fundamental lesson Leo must learn on his journey to the top. As long as she can keep up, the pride will care for her. True to form, by sunset, the lionesses provide dinner. The damaged aunt tucks in. Staying well fed will speed up recovery time. Leo is distracted. An uninvited guest. Is it friend or foe? This new playmate doesn't know the rules of tag. Why doesn't it run? That's more like it. Now it's five against one. But Leo's had enough. Flying is cheating. It's more satisfying playing with Max. Real practice for hunting buffalo. Every wrestling match is preparation for the cub's future. When games stop and they face a real enemy. Six months later, and a new season reflects transformations in the pride. The injured lioness is back on her feet, and Leo and Max are finally old enough to join the hunting party. Killing school is now in session. It's a chance for Leo to get close to a living, breathing buffalo. Today's lesson, how to ambush a buffalo in thick brush. 
The mothers are a slick team. They've been hunting together since they were Leo's age. The cub's instructions are to follow at a safe distance and watch. In dense vegetation, the strategy is to surround, creep closer, and attack. Leo wants in. It's dangerous sitting face to face with prey that can kill you. But hunting buffalo is his destiny. He's about to get his chance. The females pull down a cow. But that's not why they call in Leo and Max. She's got a young calf with her, which means hands-on experience for the cubs. Leo doesn't hesitate. But once he pins it, he's unsure what to do next. Killing a real buffalo, even a baby, is not at all like his pretend games with Max. Max isn't much help either. Mom steps in and puts an end to it. But she won't always be around to rescue Leo. This rainy season has more challenges and lessons in store. It heralds good times for the buffalo. Seasonal pans pop up all over the territory, and the herds spread out with abundant access to water. Not great for the pride. To keep up, the lions have perpetually soggy paws. It's worth it. The rains coincide with calving season. The youngsters are easier targets and offer more practice opportunities for Leo and Max. This hunt MO is simple. Track the buffalo across the water and wait till they reach solid ground before making a kill. The lionesses make it look easy. But Max and Leo don't trust this unstable surface. But Buffalo draw Leo like a magnet. And soon he's impatient with the family's slow pace. He breaks rank and pushes forward. It's a bad move. The Buffalo smell him and go on the offensive. Leo can't resist a challenge.
The hunt is ruined. Without the element of surprise, it's back to square one for the bride. Leo's got to learn the fine line between brave and reckless. One week later, Leo's boldness and lack of experience endangers the pride. <laughs> the whole family is here, pride males and new cubs, all eager to reap the crop of new calves. Leo wants another chance. But today's lesson is about restraint and coordinated effort. The mothers will decide when to initiate a chase. It takes keen observation to learn the herd's strengths and weaknesses. But it's not easy for Leo to take instructions. Even when his mother signals him to run, it's too dangerous for the cubs. The mothers end the hunt. Leo ignores their calls. He's flying solo. It's great fun chasing buffalo. But this is no cub's game. Stubborn Leo retaliates, and Max backs him up. Things turn deadly. The herd stampedes. The lions retreat but not Leo. The pride makes it out, but there's only one escape route for Leo. Up. <laughs> If he falls, he'll be trampled. There's no one to call. His family can't penetrate the mass of bodies. But Max hears his brother. The buffalo won't hesitate to kill a cub if they can reach him. Max is too far away to help. Lightning spooks the herd. A final warning. And the buffalo leave for good. It's a lucky break for Leo. Yeah. 
And Brother Max is first to check he's okay. But this gutsy killer in training has a lot to learn about teamwork if he's going to survive. Two and a half years old, Leo and Max are pushed out of their family pride. It's a brutal rite of passage for all juvenile males. They are now nomadic lions. Forced to eke out a living on the periphery of established territories. Alone for the first time, they must hunt without the pride support. They are still cubs at heart. The bond they've built as brothers and playmates make them a strong coalition. Their only hope for survival right now. Anywhere they go, they are trespassers. This is enemy territory. Scent markings warn Leo of the rightful landowners here. Two seven-year-old pride males in their prime. Mm -hmm. They'll need to be cautious and keep a low profile while hunting. Despite the urgency to find food, Leo decides it's playtime. Max knows this game well. He's rescued his brother from trees before. Play wrestling hones vital hunting skills, and it's a great distraction from their immediate challenge, food. In this chapter of their lives, lions become scavengers. Max is happy with leftovers, far too hungry to be fussy. Leo drags his heels. Even though a lion's stomach can digest rotten, decaying meat, he holds out for something better. Leo's confident he can catch his own meal. Impala. But this herd is on the other side of the stream. Patience. Someone will get thirsty. A ram. And he doesn't know he's being watched. Leo waits too long. It's over. 
his cue to rejoin his teammate. It's risky wandering around exposed. The territorial males could arrive any time. Then Leo smells something achingly familiar. Buffalo. Is he finally ready? the lesson. Study the herd and look for weakness. Then, a limp. It seems too easy. With her swollen back leg, she won't keep up with the herd. Leo's got a plan. Trigger a stampede, then pick off the injured cow. Leo underestimates the damaged female. Adrenaline fueled, she's got plenty of fight left in her. And she's got backup. The herd joins the rescue mission. And the brother's hunt is foiled. They'll have to wait until dark. Superior night vision should allow them to creep close, undetected. It's not a great start. The buffaloes know they're there. They may not see the lions very well in the dark, but they can certainly smell them. A barricade of angry bulls still protects the injured female. The brother's plan is the same. Chase the buffalo, then take down the limping cow left behind. Leo charges unexpectedly into the injured female. But she won't be left alone for long. The herd is en route. Leo must strike now. Max solves the problem. He rushes the buffalo alone to keep them away from his brother. Leo must make his move. He needs a gap to lunge at her throat. Max holds off the herd, then makes a break for it. Leo clamps the cow's windpipe. 
but his bite isn't powerful enough to silence her. They're running out of time. The herd will be back. Alone, the brothers can't fend off a stampede. It's their first successful takedown, but it's not over yet. There's a darker threat than buffalo this evening. Hyenas also hear the dinner bell. In high numbers, the odds favor these thieving marauders. <laughs> Leo's too hungry to take any real notice. Max stays on guard, so his brother can eat. But he can't hold them off forever. The heckling gets more intense as new clan members arrive. They bait the brothers for a reaction. Their plan, divide and conquer. When Leo takes the bait, ten snapping mouths block his escape. Nine others swarm Max. It's no longer about losing a meal. They can lose their lives. Then, the game changer. The rightful owner of the territory arrives. The brothers need to clear out. The roaring is a final warning. The brother's carcass is claimed by the pride males they smelled in the area. But stubborn Leo is hungry. He leads Max back to the kill. It's a dangerous decision. These are seven-year-old pride males in the prime of their lives. To defend territory, lions will fight to the death. But that's the youngster's first real kill. Face to face with true Lion Kings, the epitome of power. Even the noisy marauders keep a wide berth. No trespassers allowed.
the ultimate stamp of a king, sent marking territory to reinforce dominance and ownership. But the brothers ignore all the danger signs. And eventually, he sees them. Their presence is a direct challenge. He will fight to defend his realm. Max bolts, but Leo's slow to retreat. Despite the pride male's obvious prowess, Leo takes him on. Punishment is swift and brutal. And that's not the end of it. The second pride male also wants a piece of Leo. Leo tries to retaliate, but he's out of his depth. It's a thrashing he'll remember for the rest of his life. Sixteen hours later, and Leo's sleeping off the shock. His recklessness could have killed them both. Max is on guard duty in case the territorial males return. Losing the fight was a harsh blow to Leo's confidence and his body. He needs the comfort of a companion. The right coalition partner makes all the difference. When they are five years old, the brothers get a lucky break. Leo and Max notice they're being watched from across the river. Three lionesses, a breakaway pride of sisters, spot the brothers as potential mates. Teaming up with the females offers the possibility of territory and a chance to start a family. At last, a pride of their own is within reach. The brothers inhale their scent and determine their readiness to mate. No competing males here. This Flemon grimace draws chemicals from the female's urine over specialized scent organs on their palates. For the first time in years, Leo smells hope, not danger. Max is first to reach the youngest sister. 
Her welcome is unmistakable. In lion courtship, the female must comply before mating takes place. Once they start, it's a serious commitment. They'll mate every 15 minutes for up to four days. Leo's having less success. He's a bit too enthusiastic to start his bloodline. Unlike Max and his partner, who have a comfortable pattern of mating and resting. Unbridled confidence won't work. Leo needs to learn patience, like Max. Eventually, Leo's persistence makes an impression. This is the act to seal his position as a Lion King. Teaming up with the lionesses secures territory, the final pillar to build a pride. At last, Leo scent marks his own home. then proudly broadcasts his claim to anyone who'll listen. The day begins with a regular chase and catch hunt. Much easier now with their own warrior queens on the team. Leo's the designated catcher. With newfound numbers, buffalo hunting is a bit more predictable. It starts out well. The lionesses single out a cow. But Leo isn't in place. Max and the lionesses bring it down. but they need Leo to subdue it. Where is he? If they don't silence her quickly, the herd will return and kibosh their hunt. Max can't wait for Leo any longer. But despite his best effort, he can't stop her cry. The herd returns. and the females are sent packing. 
Without Leo, the hunt falls apart. And then, disaster. Leo's gored by the buffalo in the hunt. His rule is over. An injured Lion King is a liability. He can't hunt, and he can't protect the pride. Everything he's worked so hard for could be ruined. But Leo doesn't rule alone. It's a partnership. Always there to support, Max stays with his brother. Reunited with his companion, Leo rallies. As usual, his crisis subsides because of his teammate. And Max can do more than give comfort. If Leo eats, he will regain his strength, maybe even heal. At this time of greatest need, Max steps up and leads. All Leo can do is limp closer. It's a massive cow, but Max makes a perfect strike. This meal is Leo's best chance for recovery. He must make sure this buffalo can't call her herd, so Leo can eat without stress. The anticipation of a meal is a tonic. Max holds tight. Despite the flaying legs and the open gash on his face, It takes 10 long minutes to squeeze the life out of the buffalo. But finally, the breathing stops and Max can rest. The pillars of success. The brothers are together. Their own pride females are on their way across their very own territory. What more could a king want? Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.